Today I'm going to modify this uh, X-band radar front end for uh, ultra-wideband impulse radar operation. I'm going to start by removing this um, this IF amplifier module here. There's actually a wideband IF amp and a uh, low-pass filter inside that module. I will replace it with this uh, dual stage ultra wide band amplifier. We have a um, on the right there we have a mini circuits uh, ample wide band amp and then on the left we have another mini circuits wide band mimic amp uh, on a micro strip line. So I will replace, I will insert this part, remove this one. Alright so I've installed the uh, two stage wide band amplifier right here. And the next step will be to uh, put the cover back on and we'll plug in the impulse generator. Okay, now I have this radar set up uh, with the wideband IF amplifier. Um, and we'll do a little walk through of what we're looking at here. Okay, so at the uh, bottom we have the uh, LO, which is set to about 8 gigahertz, so the bottom, the uh, lower image will be rejected by the waveguide feed horns. Uh, the middle is the power supply radar control, power supply, and IF, which we don't use the actual IF on this unit. And above that is a um, attenuator, and we don't use any of that stuff here. Uh, over here on the left is a pulse generator, below that's the data acquisition computer. Pulse generator synchronizes all the ultra wideband circuitry up here. Lower right is a um, picosecond pulse labs 4015 impulse generator. Above that uh, is a power supply and trigger circuit which gives a nice trigger pulse from this uh, HP um, sampling scope. It's a uh, 80, 1810A 1 gigahertz wide sampling scope. And then over here, it's a data acquisition computer. And what I'll do is I'll direct the camera at these two and then I'll just kind of walk back and forth. So I can be shown on the radar screen. So you'll see me Let's watch the targets moving on the screen in range. And there are also some stationary clutter targets that are uh, in the laboratory space here. So the next step will be to um, deploy this equipment outdoors and um, walk down range and away from the radar system, record the results, and display them. Okay, so I have this uh, front end set up directed out towards the woods here and I will uh, walk down range and back range and we'll record that uh, on the radar. Okay, recording. Next we'll process the data. Okay, the next step is uh, we're going to process this data and see how, uh, how it looks. So I've written up this MATLAB script which will simply uh, go through the range profiles. And here it is. So we're tracing, there's, uh, there's myself walking outbound, here I am walking inbound.
I'm going about the same speed the whole time. So obviously this radar can see me out to maybe 50 feet or so at most. Uh, but it's all noise out here, and that's pretty typical of, uh, of in wide instantaneous bandwidth radars. They have, uh, they're much noisier, uh, much less sensitive than something with a nice long pulse using pulse compression. So we'll zoom in on uh, this a little bit, just kind of to get an idea as to where the sensitivity more or less ends. Yeah, and you know, it's it's still catching me out to about 70 feet, but that's the very furthest. I mean, I'm not. You might be able to argue a little bit past this, but not really. So, I think it's probably safe to uh, set the radar up to about 100 feet or so. And by the way, this is processed with and without uh, two pulse. Two pulse cancellation. Right now it's with two pulse cancellation. I'll uh, shut that off. It's really, there's really no difference whatsoever. I mean, <laughs> this radar, uh, ultra wideband radar, is not very sensitive, so it's not picking up all the tree clutter and things like that. In fact, it doesn't even pick up the uh, clutter like my, my uh, staircase going to the upper deck of my house. Yeah, there we go again. Let's go all the way out. You know, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe 80 feet or so. I think I see a little, little bit out here. So we'll dial in the range a little bit more this time and uh, do a little bit more of an interesting demo. And we'll see how this works. Okay, to make this interesting, I've uh, laid out a tape measure, and so I know that uh, out to maybe about 50 to 70 nanoseconds, I, that's when I drop out of the data, the uh, range profile data. So what I'll do is I'll stay within that. I'll go no longer than 25 feet, and I'll walk out and back, and I'll bring with me on the second pass a pair of cylinders and try to provide a little bit more interesting data set. So what I'll do next is uh, I'm going to start the radar, start recording, and then I'll run outside. The computer is recording data now. I will walk downrange. This time, bring with me two. So if I go in a circle, it should show up. Now we'll process this data set. Alright, so let's process the data. I've loaded onto the computer here. And here it is running. Okay. So, as can be seen here, it's pretty obvious I'm running outbound and back. So here's outbound track. We're back inbound. Up on again, back inbound, and then right around 21 feet, which corresponds to 40 nanoseconds, exactly where it is on the plot. I take the two cylinders and I spin around in circles, and you can see the multiple returns from that that I walk back inbound. So if we zoom into the rotating myself in circles, uh, 
there we are. So that's obviously the body. There's the uh, cylinder coming in. Uh, the picture in and out. So there's a nice little sine wave of a larger and smaller cylinder. All right. So that was a good demo, but I think that uh, it doesn't show the demonstrate the capability of this radar to uh, cancel out stationary clutter, which it's actually very good at. Uh, it's not, no, not great, but it's not bad at doing. So I think the next demo what I'll do is I'll put a couple of stationary targets out there, and then we can see how it uh, cancels out clutter. Okay, here we have two large copper cylinders downrange, one at about uh, 10 feet, another at 20 feet. That's some pretty, you know, two very large stationary uh, flutter targets. And this time I'll record myself walking downrange and back a couple of times with the targets in place. All right. I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times to show All right, now we'll process this data with and without uh, a two-pulse uh, clutter reduction and cancellation. Okay, so the data is now loaded on the computer, and it's time to process. So first we'll display the data with, um, without uh, two-pulse coherent uh, subtraction. This is really neat. Clearly in here, you can see persistent target returns all the time. These are from the two cylinder targets. And this is my track going outbound, back in, outbound, back in, out, back, forth between the two targets, and back in. Let's see what happens when we apply two pulse coherent change detection to this data. So what we'll do is I'll uncomment these lines to add the two pulse. Uh, and run it again. All right, check that out. No sign of the targets whatsoever. Only my track going outbound, back in, out, back in, and so on and so forth. So two pulse cancellation worked uh, very well with this system.